Hey guys, welcome to Tabletop Corner. Today I'm doing another Doctor Who miniatures set uh, review in this instance because these are all opened. Uh, today we are looking at the Sea Devils. Now first of all I'm going to apologise to this camera angle. For some reason my phone won't let me zoom in or out with either like camera option. So basically you've got the option of being really zoomed in on my hand to a point where you can like physically like feel my veins on your face. Or we've got zoomed out so far that my you can basically see my entire bedroom. So, you know, there's no, you know, this this seems like the better of the two options. Yeah, the Sea Devils. They're a very interesting faction in the Doctor Who miniatures game. They're probably the most popular faction from Old Who that have not been revived. And, you know, it's like the character... I can't believe these haven't been revived, actually. The character modelling is pretty good for uh, for back in those days. And as on the back, we can see the sculpt... Uh, look pretty nice as well to be honest you know this was a this was a bit of a job by the costume department and these were actually allies of the master so you know i kind of feel like these were like something they sort of thought were going to be a big deal when they were originally introduced um and then they've just not came back despite how much like old fan service they've been doing in recent years now one thing i will say is this is a rather typical three figure expansion so although it's very cool uh, and it's very cheap. You do basically need three copies of it to make this worth having, um, or to at least, or to play it to its best ability. You at least need two copies, um, otherwise you're basically subbing people in. Uh, but we'll get into why in a second. So first of all, we'll crack them open and take a look. You know, I went through the effort of getting this lovely like space hero clicks map, so I had something like themed on the bottom of the desk and uh you know you can't even like get a good angle on it what a waste of time that was anyway so we've got our adventure cards and uh, recruitment cards and we've got the miniatures in our little gallifrey box uh today this package was packed by ronnie again and here are the miniatures so we've got three different poses this is the first This is the second. Some incredible detail on these guys. And these are the third. Like I say, these are one of the, these are probably the most popular old Who villain uh in the game. The sculpts the, the sculpts being this good is the reason why. Like, you know, they they look really good and they play they're very interesting to play as well, so that definitely helps. But yeah, the sculpt is a large part of it. They are really cool dudes. We'll talk a little bit more about uh a little problem I have with the sculpt uh after we've had a look at the recruitment cards. So first of all we have Sea Devil Overlord. Sounds like a perfectly fine place to start. As with most of these three three uh figure packs, we get a leader, a sort of elite and a grunt so first of all sea devil overlord has five movement four resilience plus three melee dice and plus two shooting dice so he's got some pretty cool stats uh he comes in with two fate tokens he is a special character he has wounds one he's unique aquatic concentrate fire and force commander sea devil so wounds one of course means we can take one wound without dying unique we can only have one sea devil overlord Aquatic we'll get onto in a second. Concentrate Fire we'll get onto in a second. And Force Commander Sea Devil, you can only use this guy on a team of Sea Devils. So, Aquatic, quite self explanatory. Sea Devils may enter and move through water obstacles without penalty. They also gain cover against shooting attacks when in water. Now, as you may remember if you watched our Fires of Pompeii set, uh, there is a rules card in there on how you can make uh, water terrain. So, these two packs do sort of work together. Which is interesting because that that uh, it, it which is interesting that the fighters of Pompeii set and the Sea Devils are the ones my dad wanted, and interestingly they share those like water and heat rules. But yeah, I think uh, you're also allowed to just use your own sort of water terrain if you want to. I personally like the idea of putting a uh a, like a toilet on the uh on the on the board and just having them like jump in a toilet, and jump out across the map, uh, because these guys can move through water to any other part of water. Okay, so the weapons we've got, Heat Ray, that's Energy, Short Ranged, and Hand Weapon. I think we already know what all of that does. Uh, that's going to give us four shooting dice, meaning we have six in total. And our Improvised Melee Weapon is going to give us four melee dice to defend ourselves with, so that's pretty good as well. The final thing we're going to go through there is Concentrate Fire. So let's get old handles open, 
and have a look at what that does. So concentrate fire right there, right in the in the in the line of fire of the camera straight off the bat. A weapon or character with this trait may choose to concentrate fire on one target. For every character beyond the first, add one combat die to the shooting roll. Um Okay, we're gonna have to uh I think we're gonna have to get the Aratas and FAQ list on that one. Ah, okay, it's really quite simple, but isn't really explained here. Okay, basically, this allows other characters to concentrate fire on one character. So essentially, it allows you to sacrifice shots from these two guys. So say these three were together, you could, instead of having all three of them attack, you could have just the middle guy attack with plus two shooting dice. Meaning if it was this guy, you'd end up with uh, eight, which is pretty good. So you can sacrifice having extra chances at attacks for the sake of making one better attack. And that is probably one of the more poorly worded powers in the guide to the Time Vortex. But it is what it is. We are looking forward to that second edition. So that's the Sea Devil Overlord. Next, we have Sea Devils. Uh, no, next we have Sea Devil Ancients. Let's have a look at them. So Sea Devil Ancients, they're like the elite uh, unit in this three pack. They have five movement, four resilience, plus two melee dice and plus two shooting dice. So they lose one melee dice on the Overlord. Uh, they only come in with one fate token, they aren't a special character, and they keep this aquatic and concentrated fire. Uh, now this is kind of quite typical of what you get in the three figure sets. They're usually quite vanilla, sort of like this. Uh, the Sea Devils are pretty cool, but a lot of the characters are quite like this, where the grunts just don't really do an awful lot. That's fine, but it does mean that a lot of the that some of the three figure sets are a bit boring because they just don't really do an awful lot. And we'll move on here to the final card which is sea devils now these have the exact same thing except like most most lowest level grunts they also have the agent ability so you can use these guys on any team which sort of makes the force commander restriction on this guy a little bit pointless yeah it stops this guy from you being used with anything other than sea devils but like yeah there's not much else you'd chuck on other than that more or less exactly the same as the Sea Devil Ancients, just losing one resilience there. But one thing you may or may not have noticed here is that the unit count in the corner here. So you play this card, you get one Overlord. But if you play this card, you get two Ancients. Which means you can play a three pack as, as a two card team right here. And that will cover all three of your minis. But the third comes in with three minis. So basically, you're going to use one mini for your Overlord, two minis for your Ancients, and then you've got none left to do the Sea Devils. And that's basically the issue with the three figure sets. Now, this does allow you to just use the Sea Devils as an agent on a given team. That's fine. But basically, it means you need at least one more copy of the minis to be able to play a team effectively. Because if you get the third set of minis, you fill in the three you're missing, Jobs are good and that's fine. Another issue in this instance is that, as you may notice from the card artwork, none of the artworks actually match up with the sculpt. Again, this is fine because you can obviously just decide which you want. I kind of like looking at this guy as the Overlord. However, one issue with this is that once you start bringing in more than one pack of these guys, you're going to have to have one unique sculpt to the Overlord a unique sculpt to the Ancients, and a unique sculpt for the Sea Devils. So that means you're going to have to have three copies of one guy, two copies of another guy, and then one copy of a final guy. However, you're going to have to use your additional copies of this guy and this guy to represent other guys. So you're going to have three, say, say we bought three copies, we'd have three of each of these minis. So if we wanted to do three Sea Devils, that's fine. And if we wanted to do three ancients, and if we wanted to do two ancients of the same sculpt, that's fine. And if we wanted to do one overlord of the same sculpt, that's fine. But if we had the third copy, the reason we would have the third copy is because of one of the adventure cards. Now this gets a little bit confusing because this looks like a recruitment card, but it's actually an adventure card. This is a sea devil reinforcements. Now this is a typical adventure card that you get with all of the uh, three figure uh, expansions like this it's an adventure card that can only be used by the sea devil overlord and it essentially allows you reinforcements of three more sea devils so for an adventure card you can take during the game you can get three more reinforcements but the problem is if you're going to use this then those three sea devils 
Again, say we had three of this sculpt and we were representing these with two of this sculpt. We'd have one left over of this sculpt and two left over this sculpt. So basically you have to paint these in a unique way to tell the difference between them because the sculpts are going to have to overlap. And that is a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. It, it sort of makes sense to do things this way because obviously then you have to buy the three copies to make a proper team. That makes sense. That's nothing new there. You know, Yu-Gi-Oh, you have to buy three structure decks to get the structure to get their full deck and so on. There's not much extra to say about this card. It's literally just a copy of the Sea Devils. It's just it's literally just an extra copy for the cost of one adventure card. As you can see, it's got all the weapons and details written on the bottom. No, nothing written on the back, obviously, because it's an adventure card. So we're basically gonna have to check these out from the other cards. And from the from the other cards. After that, we've got two more adventure cards. We have Sonic Summoning. Eerie Sonic Pulses summon additional Sea Devils to the scene. Discard this card to return up to three exterminated Sea Devil characters to the game. You must be placed in a friendly deployment area. It's fair enough. It's a very good card. It resurrects three infantry, basically. Although it can resurrect the uh, Overlord as well. It can resurrect anything, really, as long as it's a Sea Devil. The only thing it can't do is bring more in from outside the game. But it's a pretty good card. And next we have Terror from the Deep. Exhaust this card in the friendly movement or shooting subface to move up to four Sea Devil characters from one water obstacle to another, wherever on the table it may be. The Sea Devil's new location cannot be less than two inches from an enemy character. Now, that's incredible. That is the main appeal of the Sea Devils uh, for me, is the fact that they can just jump into some water and jump out somewhere else. So I totally want to, totally want to use like a toilet as water terrain and have them jump in the toilet and jump out in like an ocean or something just some it daft like that anyway this has been a bit of a longer video than normal because of me uh ranting on about the sculpts and stuff but basically this is a really cool set there's a reason these dudes are so popular with the people who are playing the game these seem to be like the most commonly painted figures you sort of see popping up in the facebook group they're a very cool bunch of dudes they're very good if you want to try something different they're very cool for that as well and, you know they they play in a different way to everything else they're a little bit less vanilla than your usual three-figure expansion. And, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty good. They're capable guys. They have really cool sculpts. I can't really say much more in favour of the Sea Devils. So, basically, that's been my video today on the Sea Devils expansion. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.